guys. Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have Academy Killer with us, and they can say their names and what they do in the band. Hey, uh, this is Kevin. Uh, I sing and play guitar in Academy Killer. Um, the rest of the guys are at work right now, so it's just me today. Awesome. So my first question, Kevin, the one that I like asking the most, how did you start out Academy Killer? How did you get your members? Um, it's been a process uh, to get to the lineup that we have now. But uh, 2015, uh, I was trying to put a band together. And uh, I looked to Facebook. Um, I looked to Kijiji, which is the Canadian equivalent of Craigslist. Okay. <laughs> and uh, between the two, I found, uh, you know, I found a group of guys and that, you know, worked out for a little bit. And, you know, over... Over the span of, say, two years, uh, the band had gone through a handful of lineup changes. And uh, as of summer 2017, uh, it is the lineup that we have now, which was uh, compiled through Kijiji, actually. So There you go. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you, know, you had a positive story out of Kijiji, because I feel like if, I, I don't know if you're familiar, like in the States, like some people you know, have some good luck with stuff like that, like on Craigslist or whatever. Yeah. And uh, some people have some horror stories, so I'm glad it's, you didn't die. You didn't get mobbed. I did not die. And I did not get robbed. You're here to speak your story about the band, because otherwise I'd, I'd be a little worried, you know? I'd be a little yeah. worried for you. <laughs> oh, 100%. No, Kijiji and Craigslist, very hit or miss. If you're buying anything, if you're selling anything... <laughs> Very hit or miss. A lot of interesting stories. It's okay. We'll, we won't get sponsored by Kijiji or Craigslist, and I'm, 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 I can rest easy knowing that you know, some. I mean, there's some good stuff that comes out of Craigslist. I don't want to give too much. I don't want to take too much away <laughs> from them. I feel like that's a little, it's a little rude, but uh, it's definitely uh, you know, great to great news to get you know some stuff like some band members from that. Um, did you feel like in the first practice you guys were like? I know you said you had had the lineup change, you know, a few times, but like, how was it when you first like realized that like this is the lineup we're gonna be sticking with for a while? Like, how how did that go? Did you guys you guys didn't even know each other? You just had met through that, correct? Uh, essentially, yes. So Omar joined us um, a little bit earlier than summer of 2017. Um, someone that I brought out to play bass, said, you know what, I would rather play lead guitar, I know a bassist. Um, he brought Omar out, um, Omar's still here and that lead guitarist is not. Um, summer 2017 is when we auditioned uh, Lucas for lead guitar and then uh, Nathan for drums. Um, we auditioned them at separate times. Um, when Lucas came out for an audition, he nailed it, and it was like instantaneously like, this this is the man. Um, and same thing with Nathan. I told Nathan to learn one song for the audition. Um, he came out, nailed that song, and then said, well, by the way, I also know everything else you guys have, and played it note for note, beat for beat, and that was basically, this this is our man right here. That's great. You know, I feel like a lot, of, like you were saying, there's some horror stories, but I also feel like there's a lot of the good that comes out, especially in music. And like, I think this this scenario shows how like dedication, you know, how much dedication you guys put into your music and stuff. I feel like, you know, just your your band members like learning above and beyond, you know, what you thought they were going to learn. Yeah, a hundred percent. So it's always cool to hear that, you know best of luck obviously going further and uh you know stuff like that but we're gonna move into some fun questions kevin what are some favorite venues you guys like to play at and what are like some of the venues you like to catch a show at in your free time um so we've re we've really only played a lot of local stuff over the past while just with the lineup changes and getting everyone kind of settled in and and getting all the new material worked out and all that stuff but um we really enjoy Absinthe in our hometown of Hamilton. Um, Sneaky D's in Toronto is another great venue. Um, if if I'm going to catch a show, 
Uh, the Danforth in Toronto is is a really nice venue, um, but we're we're a little too small to be playing that one quite yeah. yet. But uh, it's definitely good to catch a show at. Fingers crossed. Maybe you'll maybe you'll get it before the year's over with. <laughs> maybe maybe one day. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. There we go. Next question, Kevin. A follow up. The venues. What was the last show that you attended that you didn't play? Um, I went to the Rivoli in Toronto uh, a few weeks ago, and I saw Single Mothers. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. And that was, that was my first Single Mothers experience. I hadn't listened to them prior, hadn't seen them prior. Um, I went with a friend, and I, I really enjoyed it. There was a lot of energy to, uh, energy in their set, and uh, it was a good takeaway. It was a good takeaway. There we go. Glad you had a good experience. Uh, I always love going to those sorts of shows where – like I don't know the bands at all, and I just kind of like, I'm like, let me see if I like it, if I don't like it, you know. I feel like it's very objective when you're like listening to somebody you've never heard of them, and you're just like, that's like the first thought that you hear about them as a band. I think that's really cool, and you know, I think it also like, hopefully incentivizes the band to you know, do their best and see if you know they can get new fans and stuff, especially if they're not from the same state or like, you know, country. I feel like that's really cool. Oh, a hundred percent. You gotta go out there and, and play as if, you know, it's it's a new new crowd, new audience. You have to make your first impression count, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Next question, Kevin, the big one. Who are some of your musical influences? Who do you guys draw from? Now it's hard to say. Like we all listen to uh, a good variety of music, okay. you know, a good variety of genres, and it's hard to pinpoint exactly where our influence comes from because we don't really sit down and go, "Oh, it needs to sound like this. It needs to sound like that." It's like we just kind of let it happen, and it comes out sounding, you know, however it sounds. <laughs> you know, uh, the new EP is a little all over the place, and um, I couldn't tell you where the inspiration came from, but, um, you know, I, I've been listening to a lot of, like, Vampire Weekend recently, and, nice. yeah. you know, grew up listening to a lot of, like, pop punk, like, Blink and Newfound Glory, but, you know, at the same time, uh, you know, I listen to a lot of metal and, and, you know, acoustic acts, and, and, uh, there's just an array of influences, and it's more or less, what, what do you hear, right? Yeah, and I think that's really cool too cuz I I think you're the first person that I've had that really hasn't like pinpointed, you know, like certain bands and I think that is really cool from my perspective cuz I go through so much music and it's it's neat to see, you know, somebody that's like, listen, I don't have an exact band to I feel like who we like, you know, kind of sound like or are very similar to and I feel like you know, if somebody comes back and they're like, oh, I think you sound like this, or I think you sound like this, I think that's really cool in that respect because it's like you're giving that fans the, the opportunity to be like, listen, you can listen to it for yourself and, like, see what you pull out of it rather than me just say, like, this is exactly who we were, like, influenced by. Yeah. This is who we sound like, kind of, in a way. I think that's really cool, and it gives a little bit more, like, creative liberty you would might save in in your music, you know. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, I we say that we're a pop punk band, but I I don't really like to put us in that box. I feel that you know confines us too much as to like what we are and what the sound is. So like I say, we're like a rock band with pop punk influences, and you know, I feel you just got to listen to the music. Every every song is different one to the next, and there's no putting it in that box and kind of containing it right yeah because i listened to some of this stuff and i i thought like you they you know because shout outs to becky uh she had sent me over like your like uh just kind of like epk and i was li i was like really interested because she was very obviously like forward about you guys and like you know obviously being like a pr person i would hope that she cares a lot about her bands but um i was i was very intrigued because she said she's like this is like a pop punk band but don't go into it in the mindset of like it's a pop punk band like and stuff like that and there's a lot okay. of bands that i listen to that i'm like 
you know, I love the variety. I love when a band can do, like, more than one thing, and they do it, like, extremely well. I think that is obviously the goes to show, like, a lot of talent, but also, like, I think it's just versatility. Like, if the band decides, like, initially, like, oh, we're a pop punk band, do a bunch of pop punk stuff, and then, like, eventually kind of grow and move, and, like, then they become more rock, and then they kind of fuse both of those two things together. I think that's really impressive as somebody, again, who listens to a lot of music and cycles through a lot. I thought you guys are very, like, I really, like, as you said, I couldn't really pinpoint exactly who it was. So for my, so when I asked this, I was like, I'm curious how he's going to answer it because it's not like very cut and dry off the bat. And I think that's what makes it unique to me. And I think a lot of other people will enjoy it because it's not just something that's like, oh, they're like another pop punk band insert whoever band you want you know like i thought it was really unique it's something a different take and I, i'm not just saying that because you're right here but i legitimately thought like if i didn't message you guys or whatever we didn't we weren't talking now i feel like it would be very cool to just check out your stuff and be like wow this is a little just just like that little bit different that i feel like people might might be into you know cool i i really i really appreciate hearing that i'm glad that you you can hear that we aren't really setting ourselves up to be this cookie cutter pop punk band. So yeah, because I feel like there's a lot there's a good amount of bands out there, and I'm not I I'm not the type to to slander other people either. But like you know, there are some bands out there that sound similar, and I think that could be said about pretty much any genre. But yeah. uh, it's cool when bands take. I think, in my opinion, it's cool when bands take risk because you know not everybody's gonna like everything and. I don't think that's how it's supposed to go anyway, but I think when you find those people that really are, you know, interested in what you do, I think it's really, you know, excellent when, you know, people really kind of branch out and do something that they enjoy. Cause I feel like when I see a band live or I hear a record and they enjoy what they're doing, that's like one of the coolest things. And I think you can hear it in what they write and stuff like that. You know, and that, and that's the thing is you have to be, you have to be passionate about it and you have to be Absolutely. honest about it because, you know, you can go and make a record that may sound good, but it's just, it's written to the genre. It's like, oh, this is what, you know, this is what's selling. This is what people want to hear. It's it's a safe, it's a safe bet um, or a safer bet than, yeah. you know, taking a chance and doing something that people may not quite understand right away. Um, but, it you know... It's more. It's more so honest and and just passion filled. Write with passion. Don't write with the mindset that it has to be this. Just, just feel. It's got to come out. With emotion. Out, you know? I want the emotion. And I I think it's very similar to, um, Bring Me the Horizon. Like they started out really heavy. Like oh, yeah. now, like they're like kind of like arena rock, and they're doing some really cool stuff. So, you know, I feel like trajectory wise, you guys are kind of. I mean, maybe not in the same musical genre, but I feel like you guys are kind of evoking the same sort of feelings and, like, you know, directions. So best of luck. I hope people check out this interview and review coming up soon. Uh, I feel like a lot of people will enjoy this record. Thank you very much. So you've you've heard the new EP then? You've heard lots of I've heard I've heard, I've heard bits and pieces. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm going to really delve in and give you my hard, hard facts, Kevin. Okay everything i'll put it all into it but anyway getting back into some of the more current stuff kevin who have you been jamming i feel like you kind of answered that already but like who have you been listening to lately uh you know just just the regulars but i've been listening to um vampire weekend's new record um father of the bride i've been listening to that on repeat it is phenomenal phenomenal um I've I've been a Vampire Weekend fan for a lot like since they first came out with their their self titled record, and uh, you know out of everything they've released, this is definitely a contender for for top for top record. Ooh, okay, I have to check it out then. It's very very different. Awesome, awesome, Kevin. Another fun question: If you could pick a song to cover, what would it be? <sighs> What was it? Uh, Hooked on a Feeling by Blue Suede. Ooh, okay, okay. Any yeah. particular reason why you were picking that song? I feel like... it's It slaps. <laughs> <laughs> it slaps. 
that's very cut to the point. I love it, Kevin. You just know what you want about that. Uh, definitely check that song out if you haven't yet. And hopefully let them know in the comments if they should do this as a cover song. Just saying. Might happen. It's on the internet. So it's. I feel like it's It's written in internet wording. You know, it's It's here. It's legit. Yes. yes, it needs to be done. Well, uh, on on the subject of covers, we're playing uh, <laughs> we're playing a Blink One Eighty Two tribute set tonight. Oh, tight! Um, so I'm really Blink is probably like my all time favorite band. Like they did the most for me when I was you know uh, a lot younger, and uh, for me to be playing an entire set comprised of of their music is is exciting. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, somebody get video of that. I'd love to. I'm I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'd, I'd like to see your takes on some some Blink songs. But uh, next question, Kevin, another fun one, of course. Gotta ask, favorite food to eat? Uh, there is a lot of pizza eaten in this house. <laughs> uh, my roommate and I eat far more pizza than we should. <laughs> So You're it's saying it's it like it's there. a bad thing, though. Like I well, when you eat when you eat the the mass quantities of pizza that I'm eating, it's definitely not good. You know, I may I may look good, but my insides are probably fucked. <laughs> Sorry, should I not should I not swear? I listen, I I don't you can make, you can censor me if you want. I you don't make I don't make any want. money on YouTube, Kevin. Okay, so you are you're well and you're right to to curse. Uh, freedom of speech is here. <laughs> cool. Um, um, how, however, pizza. So pizza's up there, and then I'm also uh, a sucker for sushi. Oh yes, sushi is great. Love yes, some, love is. me some sushi. Fa favorite, uh, favorite dish, favorite roll. Ooh, ooh, that's tough. That's tough. I think it varies because it's like everybody makes something like unique. Um, there's this one place I go to it. Uh, it's in Hamilton, New Jersey. Um, they make a thing called the Godzilla roll. So they like make a sushi roll and then they put it in tempura batter and they f deep fry it. Okay. So the outside is like just like, you know, thick with tempura batter and then the inside's like, you know, like all the fish isn't cooked at all. It's still raw, but it's like, it's insane. It doesn't nice. taste good the second day, but if you got it, you got it like fresh, fresh out the fryer. Fresh out the fryer. Oof, man, that's so good. Nice. I'm gonna go yeah. to cardiac arrest just thinking about it right now. <laughs> there's a there's a place near me that has something called a Las Vegas roll, and it's it's similar. It's, they they deep fry it. And there's there's cream cheese in it. It's very very good. Oof, man, I'm gonna go. We're gonna go. I'm gonna go up to uh, where you live, and we're gonna get some. <laughs> we're gonna get some sushi. Game. I'm down. <laughs> awesome. Next question, Kevin. Bringing it back into the music-related stuff. If you could pick somebody to collaborate with, whether it be a guest vocalist on your next Ooh. record or a producer you'd like to work with, who would it be? Ooh, that's a tough one. It's a weighted one. That's my favorite one, if I'm going to be frank. <laughs> uh... Do you want something realistic, or do you want if budget wasn't a thing? You know what? Listen, why don't we give me... A realistic one and we'll go with like the like just shoot for the stars kind of answer you know wow um i think it'd be cool to work with uh derek from state champs oh tight yes Fantastic. um shooting for the stars Whew. um I couldn't tell. You. Just honestly, give me a top forty producer because I want just any top forty producer, uh, pop producer, because uh, I would really like to work out like a very, very poppy rock song. To be honest, I feel like you. I feel like. Uh, I feel like. Hmm. Hmm. Who would? Hmm. I feel like. I feel like. Uh, I feel like uh, this. This artist slash producer like does like a bunch of different stuff. So I probably have to say like Pharrell would be really tight. I feel like For, he does. Pharrell would be inter That would be an interesting. I feel uh, like he does some different stuff, flag. and he likes. I feel like he likes rock, you know. So I feel like it's not out of his out of his you know realm of of expertise. Like or Br Bruno Mars would be cool Ooh, to uh, yeah. collab with. Ooh, okay. Yeah, well, something I, like we'll, something we'll with a little Bruno bit of content, on Twitter, right? We'll just add Bruno on Twitter. He'll know. Well, I'm, I'll, I'll add him a bunch, and then like maybe 
like maybe <laughs> he'll, he'll be like yo man this is sick let's i'm gonna slide into your dms right now yeah awesome next well listen well hey we got it the audio addiction fam is gonna help you out <laughs> anyway next question if there is another musical instrument you could be super good at what would it be i have always wanted to play drums before I started playing guitar and singing, the first instrument I wanted to play was drums. Uh, my parents didn't let that happen. <laughs> um, and I ended up getting a guitar and, uh, you know, wanted to start a band for the longest time. And, you know, I, I would really like to play drums. I feel like every guitarist, like, this is... This is must be like the biggest trend I've had on this channel is just like every guitarist has wanted to play drums. I'm a guitar player too, so like I feel like I also want to play drums, but I don't have that like the hand feet coordination thing. I just it's not oh, it me. It takes work. It takes it's work. Not me. Oh, you got it. It just takes it just I'm a takes... good I'm a good air drummer. Like if you see me driving in my car, I'll just be like, you know, like on the just steering wheel, like, just oh. ripping it, you know? Same. Always, always. You got to, you got to. If you get into it, you got to, you got to go, go 100%. You know, that's like, that's what you do. Yes. Next question, Kevin. One of my favorites too. I have a lot of favorites, but this one's got to be numero uno. I'm oh. a huge nerd. So I love asking this question. If you could be a video game character, who would you be? Ooh. Uh. Ooh. I'd be my created character on Ark, is what I would be. I would be my created character wow. on Ark. Yes. That was that was real nerd, but you know, listen. Very. I, oh, I, I'm I, a gigantic respect, video game nerd. All right. <laughs> I respect that. Like you know, I respect when somebody goes real deep and they're like, they're like, you know, like I got to be my character that I created that I spent <laughs> like 65 hours on. Oh no, you know. a lot, a lot more than a that. A lot more. Lot okay, more. okay. I don't, even, I don't even want to talk about the <laughs> amount of hours I put on the arc. Thank you very much. But it's okay though. You know, listen, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud that you're as much of a nerd as I am because I love when, I either love when people are super, super into it. Or they like I ask them the question, and they're like, "I don't play video games," and then I'm like, "We we sit in awkward silence for about you know a solid thirty seconds." So, oh. glad I'm glad that you really, you know, hit that home run out of the park. Con console or PC? Uh, well, I just built or both. I just built a brand new PC. I might cool. start gaming on it. Not entirely sure, but I always have this here with me i always gotta i always gotta represent you know okay the switch, okay the switch fam you know we out here i love I'm, i love switch i'm b always been a big nintendo fan still i'll probably die being a nintendo fan um but yeah i would have to say i'd have to say console just for the lack for the ease of just like playing it mainly i bought this computer to like do these things like videos and stuff so mm -hmm. i really don't want to use my work computer as my game computer but um switch i have no problem just going ham you know that's that's the jam nice yeah i, I bought a switch at christmas but it it doesn't get played much because my free time goes to like one of two games <laughs> on Xbox. i feel that i feel that that's my free time goes to this or you know sometimes i'll play the switch but you know gotta play smash i gotta oh gotta, yeah gotta got, grind it out so oh yeah <laughs> awesome next question kevin keeping it music related again if you could compile a dream tour who would be on the lineup Ooh. uh and this includes your band because like why the hell oh, not, right okay, Come on. okay okay uh let's do uh blink 182 with tom yes Get or or get like get like a time machine and get like two thousand and two to two thousand and four <laughs> blank. Um, I like that. I like that. Okay. Newfound Newfound Glory is always good live. Oh, they're tight. Uh, the used would be sick, and then give us like fifteen minutes to like get people uh, alert. I guess. That's those are that's a throwback tour. That is like something you'd see in like early two thousands. Like maybe like late 90s tour i am about the throwbacks i know that's it's it seems like it kevin so i'm i'm about that 
um, you know, listen, uh, you know, any executives who want to set up this tour, you know, just DM <laughs> Kevin or I, let's get it going. You know, we're all about trying to make dreams happen here. It's like make a wish around here. Let's get it. Uh, Do it. What's going to happen? We just have to add everybody on Twitter. And that's that's usually how it happens, right? You guys start beef and then, you know, then you guys go on tour or something. Something like that. <laughs> I'll, I'll make I'll make a diss track is what Ooh, I'll do. I'll make there we go. Track. Oh, yeah. Get it. All right. <laughs> Next question, Kevin. Kind of to follow up the dream tour. In your opinion, who puts on a great live show? Uh, the Used is always good. I've seen them a handful of times. New Found Glory is always good. I've seen them a handful of times. Um, try it. I'm now. This was a while ago that I've seen them, but uh, I saw Bright Eyes some years ago. Oh, nice. Okay. And it, it was on. It was unreal. Like it. It was just unreal. <laughs> and uh, I would hope that uh, they're still just as great alive now as they were uh, when I saw them. So. We'll have to find out if somebody's a Bright Eyes fan and has seen them recently. Recent. Let me know. Let them know. Let Kevin know. Next question, another fun one, Kevin. Favorite TV show, favorite movie? Ooh. Um, now, I have a couple go-to TV shows. Okay, okay, okay. Hit me, I'm, hit me I'm, a, I'm, a suck, I'm a sucker for cartoons. Oof, okay, okay, okay. okay. So, uh, American Dad and Futurama Ooh. are, like, up there. Bless. They're up there. Ooh. And, um... Let's say let's say Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad's Ooh, probably one of okay. the best series of all time, in my opinion, at least. It's fantastic. Um, movie, uh, it's this is easy for me. I could go back and watch this movie anytime. It doesn't get old. Uh, Kill Bill Volume One. Ooh, okay, okay, wow, coming out the gate strong. Love it, love it. Next question, Kevin. If you were trapped on a desert island for the next month and there was Ooh. one album you could bring with you, what would it be? Uh, I said earlier I've been listening to a lot of Vampire Weekend's Father, <laughs> Father of the Bride. I'd probably take that with me. It's got some chill vibes. It'd be great for the sun and the sand. There you go. There you go. And this episode is sponsored by Vampire Weekend. <laughs> um, you can purchase the record in the description below. Uh, they are going out on tour with Academy Killer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very yeah. soon. I'm not gonna put the date, but you'll know. It'll happen. Some something will happen. I feel like they're. I, feel like... <laughs> yeah, I think that's a bit. That, that'd I mean, be you're, quite you're the, like... the grab bag of of a lineup. Hey, listen. I I'm about it. I like both. I like both of your bands. So like you know both Vampire Weekend and academy killers so let's i'm just i'm just trying to like mentally prepare people that this tour is happening so they're like well if it you know they don't believe that it's not happening but if we keep saying it enough it might it's be spoken like, into truth you know it's like the secret or whatever you just have to be like it's gonna happen it's gonna happen you like write it down a couple times or something yeah exactly it's gonna happen i mean it is happening right i maybe yeah okay and on that note, Kevin, the most important thing, tell them about your band, where they can find you at, and uh, anything coming up in the next couple months. Okay, you can find us basically anywhere that you stream music. Uh, you Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon, YouTube. Um, yeah. <laughs> if, if, is that still a thing? I, is title still a thing? Uh, I mean, might as well talk about it, you know, just in case. You title, know, just, okay, you know. Uh, Google Play. Um, if you feel like direct from the artist, we do have a website. We do have a merch page. You can buy our first EP. You can buy digital copies of our music. Um, so basically, an anywhere that you would listen to music, you can find us. Except Bandcamp. I don't. I don't think we have anything on Bandcamp. Um, or sa or s maybe SoundCloud. I don't know. Uh, Except over the that, next except for that diss track that diss track is a... I'll, the diss track has to go on SoundCloud <laughs> like it has to like that's where it would get that's where it would get the attention yeah it would it would so anyway continue on Kevin 
um, over the next couple months. So uh, July 26th, we've got the first single off Lost and Make Believe coming out, The Distance. Uh, you'll be able to find that everywhere. Um, you may or may not see the video before that. You may or may not. July 22nd. I don't know why that date sticks out to me, but, you know, no significance, really. July 22nd, no significance. I don't know. I don't know either. Um, in August, we'll be releasing another single in video. Um, we actually shot the video we'll be releasing in August. We shot that nearly a year ago now. Wow. Um, Interesting. And we've been sitting on it since. Now, this funny story. <laughs> this song was originally recorded as a standalone single, and uh, it, it kind of like turned out a lot better than we had anticipated. Like, we thought it's going to be a good song to put out there. You know, it's a little B-side. People hopefully enjoy it. And I got you. It, it turned out better than we anticipated. And it's like, well, we may as well just maybe hold on to this, save it for the EP. We'll have you know another video for the EP, you know the EP release, and okay, okay. so we've got a very old song and video <laughs> coming out in August, um, and then in September we've got uh, Lost or Make Believe coming out on uh, September twentieth. Awesome. And that's um, our next. That's our next couple months at a glance. You're really, really killing it out here. I gotta give you that, give you that, that applause. Thank you. But. Huge thanks to Becky over at Big Picture Media. You know, listen, I do PR work, so I know how much it means to, you know, do all this stuff, how much hard work it is. So I got to give got to give love to my good friend Becky. She's killing it. Go check her stuff out. She's one of the best and uh, love getting any any band she does work with uh, on the channel. But more specifically, you should go check Academy Killers because... They're freaking fantastic, and uh, links will be in the description where you can find out about their band, new music, and you should go pre-order their new record because I'm pretty sure that's a thing. And you know, like if you want to like support them and that tour, they're going on tour with Vampire Weekend, so you know, yeah. you know they gotta they gotta have that extra money in their pocket. So yeah. definitely go check them out and uh be excited for the new music uh i'm really excited to get a review out and for people to really go give this band a listen because uh no johns i really think they are a fantastic band and uh i'm always excited to have new members of the audio addiction family here so go give them i know well, <laughs> you make me feel so loved man. <laughs> i try i try everybody on here i love so um Definitely go check them out, and if you enjoyed this awesome interview, please share it, like it, subscribe. It goes a long way, and uh, make sure to tweet at Vampire Weekend about their tour that's coming up in uh, a non-disclosed date that you should definitely check them out on because they're definitely going on tour, and we totally yes. didn't make that up whatsoever. So go give them some love. Uh, huge shout-outs to Kevin. Thanks, Kevin, for coming on, man. Yo, thanks for having me on, and thank you, Becky, for all the work you're doing. Fantastic. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching, of course. Uh, if you enjoy what we do, make sure to go check out the other series we do. We do album reviews, we do band interviews, and we do live videos, so definitely go check that out. Um, hit that subscribe button, it really helps our channel, helps us grow. Make sure to hit that like button as well. Uh, go follow us on social media, that's all down below. We try to keep that as updated as possible. We also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us guys talk to you later deuces